uh, we were studying from Friday, uh, Genesis 39, verse number 20. And Joseph's master and put him into the prison, a place where um, the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever he did there he was the doer so this is what we are going to study today um, first one was the that he was bound that was the prison of oppression then we learned the second one was the prison of a place of obscurity that is darkness unknown and then yesterday we learned that uh, Joseph in the 21st verse, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor. So we learned yesterday that uh, Joseph from God, presence, God's providence, God's purpose, and God's power. Praise God. So it was there that he learned from God and God gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So today we go to the 22nd verse. And the 22nd verse says, And the keeper of the, prisoner, uh, of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever he did there, what? And whatsoever he did there, he was the doer of it. So we find that um, a place with extreme harshness, extreme pain, extreme sorrow, and no matter treatment and rejection and insult and humiliation was gone, going on, but we find that Joseph was of the word. In other words, a place where he was extremely obedient. Hallelujah. Now, what happens in our life is, the question is, under extreme pressure and extreme hostility, and when people have wronged us, is it easy to be still faithful to God? For example, the Lord says, love your enemies. The Lord says, do good to those who to those who do bad things to do, hurt you and do all kinds of bad things to you. Praise God. The Lord says, bless those who curse you. The Lord says, uh, pray for those who persecute you. So, is it easy for a person to do all these things? Because most of the time, our life is governed by our emotions. And here we find that Joseph in the prison found a place, a place where he had to learn extreme faithfulness, extreme obedience, and because of which we find the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. The attitude of Joseph, in spite of negative reception that he had received, did not stop him from being faithful to God. Hallelujah. And uh, how many of us, when our mood is gone off, we are able to function very beautifully? Has anybody ever lost your mood? Have you ever heard, I'm not in good mood today? Uh, why is the person saying, I'm not in good mood today? Obviously, it must have been a summer season. But in winter, everybody's mood is Excellent. Is it so? So is it depending on the climate or what you are thinking? What I am thinking. Praise God. So we find that Joseph, even though 
He was put in the prison. He did not look at the prison as a place of prison. He only looked at that place as if he has got another job. Anyway, he was sold as a slave. Slaves don't get salary. How many of us work better when the dirhams increase? And here is a man who is working for no salary. And yet, his performance is excellent. And now that he has been uh, out of the Egyptian master's house and is put in another department called the prison where his freedom is lost, his desires are gone and he gets no salary. And yet, the jailer or the, or the, or the keeper of the prison or the jailer saw that this man has got an excellent attitude. He has got an excellent attitude of a servanthood. Hallelujah. And that's why when he looked at his attitude, he made him the manager in the prison. So in other words, Joseph is showing us, you put me in any department, when my attitude is right, my attitude will take me to the, right, uh, to the high altitude. Praise God. So all that our test is all about is what is my attitude when the place change. What is my attitude when everything is not in my favor? What is my attitude when I have been wrongly blamed and demoted from a manager to a prisoner? Praise God. Hallelujah. So here we find Joseph, a man of integrity who was faithful to God, irrespective of all kinds of negative circumstances. Is it easy to be faithful to God despite the unjust circumstances? Praise God. Hallelujah. What happens when somebody, you, you are doing good, you are really doing good, and somebody put a wrong blame to you, on you, and you are in the prison. Will you keep rehearsing what they did to you? Has anybody ever rehearsed? Rehearsed? No, they say rehearsed. Rehearsed, rehearsed. When they have the choir practice, they have again and again the same practice, right? When they have got a skit, they have the same practice. Why do they do the same thing over and over again? To, to perfect and to get more... Yeah. Uh, what happens when you are rehearsing the negative things? You become more perfect and more stronger in how you can cry better. Hallelujah. So was Joseph sitting in one place and sitting and crying and bitter about what had been done to him wrongly? Yesterday we learned a very powerful lesson in the book of James that when a person does that, he opens the door for demons to download in his life and those demons start mastering that person's life and causes confusion and destruction in the person's life. So do you need somebody to do black magic on you? <laughs> Many a times people will come and say, you know, I think somebody has done black magic on me or white magic or any magic on me. My question to you is, are you bitter? And if you are bitter, then nobody needs to do anything. You have done it on your own self. Now that the light is on, at least now we will not. Uh, how many of you now understand that getting bitter is good for you? Forgiving somebody is good for you? So are you doing some favor to the other person? Not at all. So many a times you will say, let him change, then I will forgive. Okay, you can keep, keep waiting to forgive. By that time, what are the demons going to do? They are going to suck the life out of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let us make a decision that no matter what happens to us, Lord, we are not going to sit in one place 
piercing our hurts and our wounds and what people did to us and what people said to us but even in that situation we will make decisions to do what your word says we by the power of the holy spirit make a decision to be obedient and faithful to the lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus so we find joseph a extremely excellent person that even though nothing was going in his favor yet he remained faithful to god amen hallelujah now my question to you is did god love joseph with all the good things that he was doing was god pleased with joseph then why did god allow the egyptian master's wife to put a blame on him and get him landed in the prison huh very nice god's plan to take you in the prison hallelujah thank you jesus my friend god's ways are not our ways right and god is a master planner he, he his decision is to get the best potential out of you because he knows what kind of stuff he has put in us but the problem is we don't know what we are made of hallelujah and 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 if you have ever used if you have ever used a toothpaste you will see that if the paste is in the tube and you press it out of the tube will only come what is inside the tube you take a toothpaste and pray for butter butter won't come paste will come hallelujah and you can press it the way you want you can squeeze it with your leg you can squeeze it with your hand you can bite it with your teeth but only paste will come so god wants to tell us that when he we got born again he has put so much of his riches the spiritual things so much inside of us that this can come out when he has planted us in a place where we learn to be faithful to him he has planted us there just as he planted joseph in that prison for a reason the reason is that uh, god does not want to kill him but god wants to train him hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus so what is god expecting from us uh have you ever heard we should praise god at all times rejoice in your spouse always and again i say rejoice married people when do we rejoice when my spouse is in good mood rejoicing the moment my spouse mood is gone what happens any time mood is gone off not cooking at home hallelujah so our rejoicing is depending on what the lord or the spouse so what is god expecting god is expecting no matter what the situation is no matter what is going around he is expecting from us that we rejoice in all situations in every moment of our life so when i am rejoicing that joy that i have comes only when i believe in my lord joy comes only when i trust in my god you can reduce it i'll i'll increase my volume but it will start echoing just reduce it i'll increase my volume should have told me no yeah praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus i can increase my volume praise god he is expecting me to increase but he did not tell me so i after i saw that he is increasing in the amplifier i can increase my volume in the same way in our situation that we are going through we can increase our faithfulness by trusting in god <coughs> hallelujah it, it, the, the increasing of the faithfulness or decreasing of the faithfulness is our choice 
And when we understand that by increasing our faithfulness, it's only going to get us into a better position to now launch ourselves to the next level. So all that God is looking into our life is how much can this person still be faithful in small matters then I can trust him with big matters. Hallelujah. So in this faithfulness that he was in was he getting dirhams or was it more about the service? So in this faithfulness did he have to work more or less? more and in this faithfulness would he get any benefits absolutely zero so when God sees that this person's service is not based on what benefit I will get but it's all based on that God this is what you want me to do I'm doing it I'm not bothered about what I'm going to get but I will do it for you what is our attitude has anybody ever got up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pray why did you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning? Why exactly at 3 o'clock? Because well, that's the time the hotline is very strong. Huh? The hour of mercy, otherwise the hour is not there. Huh? Praise God. Hallelujah. So you are saying it because that time you are going to receive more mercy. Again, your attitude is, I'm getting up at 3 o'clock because I can get more mercy. But what is, G what is Joseph saying? He's saying, I'm getting nothing. But I'm doing it because I want to be faithful to you. So most of the time, our service to God it's based on what I'm going to get or my service to God is that God, you have done so much for me on the cross, it's my turn to do something for you. Praise God. Lord, help me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if I have to ask a question, how many of you want to be faithful to God? All hands will go up. Then why are people failing to be faithful to God from the heart? They want to be faithful to God, but they find that that faithfulness goes wavering. Why? Huh? Because there are lots of distractions that also I want to enjoy. There are lots of pleasure in this world that is also tempting us. There's a lot of pressure. There are many a times you might even hear the word, I'm very busy. Have you ever heard? There was once a man that he was jobless for a long time. So he began to come to church for every service he was there. Thrice the service in the church, weekdays he would be there. Bible study he would be there. Intercession he would be there. Uh, on the Sunday he would be there and one fine day he got an excellent job. After a week the preacher never, the priest did not see him for two months. So the priest began to wonder has he fallen sick? So he went to meet him at his place and said um, I don't see you coming to church. And he said you know father uh, actually speaking I got a good job. And you know, I have become too busy now. I have no time. So the priest said, no problem. I can fix up your busyness. I can say one prayer and you will not be busy anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. What was he busy? Busy with the Lord? So most of the time, how is our attitude towards God? Many a times a person will say, uh, I am busy or somebody will say you know my children are small just let them go to school you know now they are in primary I have to be there uh, and once they go to school I'll come I'll come 
and then uh, after school they say you see they a little more they will go to the college and i'll come praise god now once they have finished the college let them get a work job here i'll come praise god now when they got a job now see marriage is coming close so let them get my once the marriage is i am free praise god now marriage got over and in two months that this came now uh, grandchildren are coming uh, let, let and then comes a time coming home coming home never want to roam does that happen because we have lots and lots of other things whom we give priorities the top priorities rather than honoring god and being faithful to him but what about joseph his circumstances were so negative and yet he made it his highest priority to serve god hallelujah now has god given everybody the freedom of choice now you to come you used your freedom of choice you could have been at home after the whole day work it's not easy to travel all the way from dubai to sarja and today it was uh, taking a lot of time praise god so it's not easy right but yet you made a choice to come here in the same way every day there are so many choices around us that we can go and meet somebody and serve somebody so our faithfulness to god or our service to god is based on not god not even the holy spirit not even the evil spirit it's based on us because i choose to the degree that i want to go and serve the lord so i can't say holy spirit many a times we blame the holy spirit holy spirit give me the strength give me the strength lord and and empower me anoint me lord and he says okay after that anointing what are you going to do are you coming to church okay all that is over then what after all that after what all that what is your choice what's the degree of your choice to serve god and thank god jesus said whatever you have done to the least of the preachers you have done it to me what did he say what you have done to the least of my brother and who is that brother when i was hungry you gave me to eat when i was thirsty you gave me to drink when i was naked you covered me when i was sick you came to visit me when i was in prison you came to visit me you began to pray for me and when you have done it for these people you have done it to me so are we going around searching for such people now tell me honestly what would joseph get giving his excellent service to the prisoners in the hotel when you go some waiters give you excellent service Do you know why because they love you so there is some motivation but what about joseph what motivation was there just zero but yet his heart condition was that god when i am serving them i am serving you when i serve somebody i am serving you amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah now now when a person is going through extreme negative situations will he have the thought of going and serving somebody oh at that time he has a thought that somebody should come and serve me hey come on i'm asking you when when a person is going through extreme hardships and trials is he stretching his neck like the ostrich that somebody will come and help me or is he making the choice that my trials are there but let me look out for somebody who has got worse trials than that and what is it that i got freely i can use it and serve somebody listen 
God will never ever use something that you don't have to create your future. Never, never. He will always use something that you have. And when you with your free choice are willing to use that for the service of God in your faithfulness, it will open the door for your future. It's a spiritual law. Every day, every day from our life, say that life. life. Say that again. Life. What is life? Life is? Li life is? What is life? My life is in you, Lord. What is life? Life. Life. One minute, one minute. Life. 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 Huh? Okay. Tony, life. Life. Good. Life. You know, you know, now I understand, now I understand, hold on, hold on, now I understand that even after giving you written definitions, you have not learnt it. And if you have not learnt it, you will never understand. Because your decision in life is only going to be based on the knowledge that you understand. And if you don't understand, then your decisions will always go wrong. Life. Very good. All wrong answers. Some total bola utna ho gaya kya? See, see, listen. When I give you definitions, I give you definitions so that once you understand that truth, you can change your future. That's not the definition I gave you. My life is my sum total of my thoughts, my words, my actions, my will, my desires. If my thoughts are ungodly, my words are ungodly, my actions are ungodly, my, my desires are ungodly, my will is ungodly, what kind of life I have got? Ungodly life. Now when I am talking about godly life, I am saying that these thoughts, these words, these actions, this will, these desires, I put them to death and make God's word my word. Make God's thoughts my thoughts. Make God's desires my desires. Now whose life am I giving? God's life. Otherwise we will only sing, my life is in you, Lord, and your life is in me, you Lord, but I don't understand what's life. That's why Jesus said the one who loses his life will find new life. Means what? My corrupted all these things, I put them to death and in exchange I take God's word, God's thoughts. Now, what, now whose life am I living? God's life. In this body, whose life is now living? God's life. And that's why he said, the one who will save his life, what is his life? The fallen, corrupted life, desires. If he is going to save that and say, I'm not going to part with it, I'm not going to crucify it, I'm not going to put it to death, Jesus said, such a person will lose his life because such a person is on the journey of destruction. So what kind of life was Joseph living? God's life. Did he have a choice to live a selfish life? Yes. Did he, could he do that? Yes. But did he choose that? So in our life, what is the, law, what is the world teaching us? God life or selfish life? What was Jesus' life? Jesus' life was selfless. Okay. His life was his father's words, 
father's thoughts, father's action, father's will, father's desire was his life. And that's why he said, I don't do what I want. I do only what my father wants. So every day, do we have the freedom of choice to choose life? Now when Jesus said, the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. How? By giving his life. What is his life? Selfish. And Jesus said, I've come to give you what? Life. When you already have life, why should he come to give you life? I already have life which is taking me on a journey to death. So I have to put to death that life and now take Jesus' life. And how do I take Jesus' life? Through his word. Are you understanding? Now after next month when I come and ask you the same thing and you give me the same definition. Means what? Until my mind is not renewed, my life cannot be changed. And my, life, and my mind will only be renewed based on the knowledge. So how much of knowledge am I receiving and that knowledge that I'm receiving, how much am I applying? The degree to which you apply is the degree to which your life has changed from your natural life to God's life. And that's why in God's kingdom it doesn't matter what you were living before. You could have been a murderer who has killed say 50 people. But when you gave your life to Jesus, you made his word your life. In no time you will find that the person who came to church for the next 50, last 50 years but never changed his thinking. And this person who was a murderer changes his thinking completely to the word of God. Within a year you will see life, his life becoming a blessing. It's not how much attendance you put in the church that determines God kind of life. It's how much have you made a choice to believe it and apply it in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So once a person understands that I can change my life. If I have to ask, how many of you want to, your life to change? All hands will go up. What's the secret? My life will change to the degree to which I've changed my thinking. That's why Jesus said, I repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now everyone wants to experience the kingdom of God. Everyone wants the, 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 the blessings of the kingdom of God. But what's the key? The key is only one thing. Repent. And repent doesn't mean change your action. Repent means change your thinking. When your thinking has changed, your, right, your wrong actions will surely change. If your thinking has not changed and your wrong actions, you are trying to change your wrong actions without changing your thinking, it will never change. Because your thinking is where your decisions are. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what did Joseph learn over there? He learned that in this place, God is still expecting me to move around being a servant, doing good, and when I'm doing good, I'm bringing glory to God. So what was his motivation? His motivation was not what I'm going to get from God. His motivation was how much can I bring glory to God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in other words, in times of difficulty, a person can make a decision either to go, uh, honor God by his lifestyle or use that difficult moments and trials as an excuse to say, under pressure, I broke down. I'm not able to do what God is telling me to do because 
the pressure is too much, the trials are too strong. Now, when does this happen? This happens when a person is trying to do good with his own strength. And that's why Paul began to say in the book of Philippines, Philippines is a book of joy. And Philippines is a book where Paul suffered to the maximum. But in that maximum suffering, you find the word joy again and again in those four chapters. Because in those four chapters he's saying, I am able to do all things through Jesus Christ who empowers me from within. In other words, I do not have the power to do good. But the one who is in me, when I keep thinking on him and keep understanding what he has done for me and what kind of power is in me, then I make a choice to do his way, whether I like it or not. My emotions don't rule over me. I only do what he told me to do and I find a power take over me and produce the glory and honor to God. And that's the challenge that we all go through. The challenge is under pressure, how much am I still going to keep my mind renewed on the word of God? Because when that pressure comes, the question is, am I going to honor God or am I going to dishonor God? Am I going to allow the trials to rule over my life or am I going to allow the word of God to rule over my life? Whoever I give the authority becomes my master. So, my question to you is another question. Whatever happened to Joseph, was it just a coincidence? Whatever happens in your life, is it a coincidence? So if it is not a coincidence, what is God interested in? God is interested in how much can this person, even under pressure, honor me? And how do we honor God? We honor God by obedience. Now let's look at how Jesus learned. Say that, learned. learned. Say that again. Learned. Now let's see how Jesus learned obedience. Did Jesus have to learn? Hey, did Jesus have to learn obedience? Who said yes? <laughs> did Jesus have to learn obedience? Jesus had to learn obedience. He was quoting the scriptures at the age of 12. He fixed up all the scholars in the temple. Did Jesus had to learn obedience? He is the son of God. And how did he learn? That is at the end. But how did he learn? From childhood. By his parents? Word of God. Okay, let, let, let's, let's ask Jesus, how did he learn? Hello. It's, it's good to ask Jesus, how did he learn, right? Huh? Coming through human flesh. Obedience. Okay. Hey, you son, you want to add something? Tony? Brother Tony, we want to add something? Tony only wants to say, he learned obedience too. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tony, give me Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. And we have learned it so many times. Jesus, in the days of his flesh, Jesus, in the days of his flesh, means what? In the days of his body and blood, when before the crucifixion, from childhood. Hello? From childhood. When he had offered up, what? So was Jesus Offering prayers? Yes. And supplication? Was he praying for others? Yes. With? Hey, 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 hey. Hold on, hold on. You mean to say, Jesus was praying with crying and tears? But isn't he the son of God? Isn't he having so much of power? And he's praying with tears? 
and loud crying, strong crying means loud crying, unto his father, he means his father, that was able to. So, so right from his birth, the devil wanted to kill him. Come on. And the mama must, who, who taught you A, B, C, D, A for apple? The mama in the beginning. Then we went to school and then the teacher started. But who, who taught you the language? The mama and the papa. Praise God. So, the mama teaching the son and the son speaking the scriptures, understanding the scriptures, praying to his father for help because every day and night the devil was out there to kill him and put him to death. Is there? Tears unto him that was able to save him from, from death. So the father was able to save him from death. How? Through Jesus' prayers. Okay? And was heard in that he feared. Give me the eighth verse. Though he was a son, or he were a son, yet, yet, he learned, hello, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. So, by the things we suffer, what are we going to learn? Obedience to whom? Hey, no, 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 no. By suffering, you don't learn obedience to God. If you have the scriptures and the understanding of the truth, then that suffering will help you to learn to obey God. But a person who has got no understanding of the scriptures and there he's suffering, do you think he is doing God's way? He's still now he's doing like what I did. When my factory was not working, what did I do? Some some other person said, Your factory is not working, come with me. And he took me to a place. That lady had a long hair. <coughs> And, and, and she told me, gave me some instructions. Praise God, my factory started working. It worked for three months and closed down permanently. <laughs> no, y'all can laugh, man. But in that, what I practiced, I got afflicted. Now, if I knew that Jesus' power can get me out of this mess, would I go there? So I was suffering, but I did not know the truth. So where did I land up? I landed up in the wrong place, and that long place not only afflicted me, destroyed me, and had power over me, and that is why I had problems of demonic activities. <coughs> but when the Lord delivered me, and he showed me his ways, now my choice was, do I go back or do I continue in the new path? So when did I actually come to know that there is a God? I never knew that there was God until 33 years of age. Because I was thinking, oh, there is a God. I have never seen him, neither have I experienced anything. So I don't know. But when I went through that pit and there was no other choice, praise God. And the gospel was preached. And through the preaching of the gospel, I could experience the power of God setting me free. The manifestation that began to take place. But in those days were the days when I would go to every person. If there are eight people there laying hands, I would go to all the eight, not get satisfied, and go for the second round. Because in my belief was, the more they lay hands, the more the power. And after a few months, I found that even though they laid hands, nothing seems to happen. But I also found that what scriptures where Jesus is healing, I would record it on a walkman. During our time, it was CD was not there, so on the cassette, plug it into my ears and put that cassette A on for 45 minutes. Before the cassette could get over, I would end up vomiting. And in that vomiting, there was never a grain of food, but a sticky white phlegm coming out. 
I began to wonder. These people are laying hands. Nothing happens. But if I pluck this word in my ears, something is manifesting. So from then on, my focus on somebody coming on laying on my hands began to diminish and the word of God began to take place in my life. And the more and more the word of God began to rule over my life, I found that I am not doing those actions, but the word is ruling over my mind and making me do those actions. Are you, are you understanding? So I found to make choices now was extremely easy. Because the word of God would give me the strength, the grace to do things that I had never done before. And as I began to do that, I found amazing results in my life. And what I began to practice and I began to see, I began to go and talk to others who are suffering. You know, today, it's easy for you to believe by, your, by the stripes of Jesus, you are already healed. So now you are believing you are already healed and you are thanking God spiritually, agreeing to God, and then the healing comes. But I want to tell you, 20 years back, when I started experiencing this and I would go and speak nobody would agree because it was entirely different I would not pray to God God give me I would say God thank you very much I've received it so it was like entirely different but when people began to apply it in their life they came back and said it works Because I began to do what the word of God said and it began to work. Hallelujah. 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 I began to realize that God loves me. He wants to change me. But I've reached this pit not because that God was punishing me. You know, all my life I had learned one thing. That when you do wrong, God punishes you. How many of you have heard that? Anybody has heard it? Does God punish you? I want to ask you, um, if you put salt in the coffee and the coffee became salty, was it God's problem? Who put the salt? So the coffee by default has to become salty. In the same way, when I made choice to go against his word, he doesn't need to punish me. My very decision has taken me to the destination. See, sometimes you are in a new place, okay? And there are two platforms. And you want to go to a certain place. Both the trains look the same. If you are on one first track, it must be going opposite to your destination. But you don't know anything. And let's say you got into the first track which is going on the opposite direction and you are in that, praise God and, and after some time in the train you are asking them uh, uh, how long it will take to reach that person is saying you are in the opposite direction so now what are you saying don't no worry, I will pray to God and God will turn, change the train track <laughs> come on he will say just get down from the train cross over to the other platform get into the other train and you will reach the destination, right? right? in the same way saying Get out of those wrong decisions and take my decision and move in this direction. I will reach you to your direction, to your destination that I have for you. Can you tell your neighbor, please change the tree? <sighs> Hallelujah. How does it look? How does it look? Hey, listen, listen. How does it look? I, I want to ask you, how does it look? You will say, no, Lord, it's a, it's a one-day journey. I'll fast and pray, and I will still reach that God, my destination. Foolish person. That's what Jesus is saying. Repent. Change. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So in all these things, what is the key? The key is submission. In the prison, we learn submission. What is the definition of submission? I 
I don't want the definition what you have learned for years. I want the definition what I gave you. Yeah, turn the notes. When the devil shows up and the problem shows up, you tell the devil, just give me five minutes, I'll take my notebook and come. <laughs> When the devil showed up to Jesus, he said the same thing. Hold on, devil, I'll just go and look at the Torah and come back. And then he's turning the pages where it is God. Help me, Father, Father, help me. Come on. A simple question. How many of you want the devil to flee from you? That also they are now thinking. <laughs> Even if my question is right, Lord... Jesus, help me. Every time they look at me with suspicion, Lord. Okay, James chapter 6. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 6. And, yeah, yeah, we'll go there, brother. Let's start with 6. Because in 6 only, uh, most of the people have fallen. So there's no question of the devil running. The devil and they are God grafted. Okay, let's, let's go with six. He giveth, he giveth more grace, wherefore he has said, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. God fights. God comes against the proud. Proud. Hallelujah. Who is a proud man? What's the definition of proud? Oh, you don't know what is proud? Arrogant, very good. Another, any other thing? Ego? Okay, another. Extreme negative attitude. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> any other? Th any other? Any other thing? What about shy? What about shy? Is shy pride? <laughs> Look at this fellow. Shy, shy is pride. What about self pity? Right? What about the person who is very sensitive? Huh? Opposite of what? The meaning of the word pride is when the person is thinking about self. So when you are shy, what's that? What is shy? See, 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 the rod is there. Has it got two ends? What we understand pride is only one end. Arrogant, ego, me, boom, ah, boom, boom, all that. On the other side of the rod is shyness, self-pity. What will people think about me? Me, 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 me. Me, me, me. And when that me, 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 me. <laughs> me, 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 me. At that time, is that me, me, me looking at God or me? Me. What's that? When, when a person is worried, what's that? Me, 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 me. When a person is bitter, what's that? It all comes on to that I. What was the devil's problem? It was a high problem. And what is God saying? God fights the pride. So in a day, how many times are we filled with pride? You know what people think pride means the one whose nose is on top. Mm. That's why my nose got chopped off. <laughs> Does that mean no pride? Look at her imagining so many things. Hallelujah. So what is pride? Pride is when a person is all of me. 
And the Bible says when a person is all about me, what? God fights. So now I put him to shame. I put him to shame in front of everybody. He goes back. What is he thinking? All the insult. So now is he thinking about all those things? Yes. So is he going to make decisions based on God's word? Or me, me, me? So when he's on me, 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 can God help him? What was the devil trying to do with Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane? Getting him into pride. By how? Don't go and sacrifice yourself. He was showing him me. And what was that me? That me was that when Jesus would be made to be sin, who knew no sin, sin coming into him would get him separated from his father. And that's why he never called my father, my father. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, in a day, how many times are we filled with pride? Now, let's take some examples of pride and humble. Daniel is in the lion's den. Is he me, me, me? Or is he focused on God? Now, did God give his grace to the humble? Cedric, Meshach, Abednego, me, 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 or God? Did God show up? You look at any person's example and ask there, me, 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 or God? And wherever it is God, you see grace coming. So, when there is a battle in the prison, at that time, if your mind is full of me, 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 who is coming against you? The Bible says God himself is coming against you. So what does God want to, you to do? To be humble. And what is humble? Humble is a person whose mind agrees to God. Agrees to his word. A person who is teachable. A person who is a doer of the word. A person who does not take offense, give offense. A person who is extremely teachable and does not give excuse. Quickly says, yes, I'm wrong. What was the problem with Saul and David? Whose sin was more, more dangerous? Whose sin was more greater? Saul's or David's? Hey, no, D David actually committed adultery. He also committed murder to cover up. But why was David forgiven and Saul not forgiven? Because, no, because Saul was always giving excuse. When, when Samuel came and asked him, what have you done? He said, you know why? Because you did not come and these people were coming against me. He never said, I'm, I, I'm wrong. But what about David when he came to know that Nathan came and told him the sin? What did he do? He just repented and he said, I'm wrong. God, I've sinned against you. He was humble. So most of the time, do we get, give excuse or do we take responsibility of our pride? What's the key to every sin? Pride. Because in every sin, the root cause is selfishness. If a person is selfish, he will end up committing sin. If a person is selfless, he cannot commit sin. What was Jesus? Full of self or full of selfless? So what is he teaching his disciples? To be full of self or selfless? So in the prison, what happens to a person? Is, is he all the time thinking about self or selfless? In the prison. Self-centered. And what happened to Joseph? In the prison, is he self-centered or is he only looking out for opportunities to be selfless to help somebody? So most of us in a day, do we qualify here? So who is coming against us? Thank you, Jesus. Give me the next, next one, Tony. Submit yourself. Now, now, why is he saying submit yourself therefore to God? Submit yourself therefore to God. Therefore. What for? Now that you know when you're humble, God gives you what? Grace. In other words, he says, now that you are agreeing to me and you are trusting me, 
I don't want you to fight. I take over the fight for you. But wherever yourself is there, God says, I cannot take, I cannot intervene in your fight because you're still full of self. Isn't that amazing? So in the prison, what's the devil's job to do? His job is to keep you focused on Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What about Paul when he went through battles? Was he? What was he full of? Self or God? Even when he was stoned and thrown out of the city thinking that he is dead and when he got up, is he cursing? He's saying, I want to go and save their soul. And he's on his march to go back to the city to preach the word of God. So what is he full of? <coughs> full of God. When you're full of God, there's no, no, no part of self in you. And the more you're full of God, the more the grace of God working on your behalf. So most of the time when we are in a prison, when we are in trouble, when we are in trial, are we looking out for opportunities to go and be a blessing to somebody or are we all the time thinking about ourselves? Okay, I'll tell you something that happened. I don't take holidays and I'm all the time preaching, 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 preaching. Going from place to place, place. My sister called me up. And she said, I went to the bank and I found that dad, before his death, had made divisions. Okay? Me, my sister, and my brother. Okay? And she said, when I went to the bank, I found that you have not yet transferred what dad has earned and given it to you as a gift. And it's been six years. And she said, I understand the whole day you are thinking and traveling and doing all those things, but I want you to understand that's my dad who worked hard and I want you to come to Bombay. I will do everything for you, but I want you to come and stand there and put your signature, rest, I've done it for you. Why? I had no time for myself. Six years have gone. I've seen in my life, the more and more I kill myself for the kingdom of God, I'm lacking nothing. Forget about lacking, I'm having abundance. I found the key. And the key is, don't think about your benefit. What you got, how are you going to invest it in somebody's life? Day and night. And I found, when the battle begins, my God always shows up. If I don't submit, if I don't crucify that self on the cross willingly, in the midst of my trial, I cannot resist the devil. If you are praying and saying, God, this devil has been troubling me. How long, Lord? How long? Is he, is he, uh, can't you do something and get this devil away from me? And God is saying, listen, I'm not the one who is supposed to get it out. You are the one who is supposed to get it out. Who is supposed to submit to God? I, the word submission. I forgot about the word submission. Sub and mission. Everybody seated here has desires. And your desires is your mission that you want to manifest in your life. Is it right? Come on, is it right? So, can that desire be selfish? Can that desire be 
can that desire be ungodly so now that person gets into the word and realizes that i am desire is not what god wants me to desire so he says to god okay lord if this is what your word says i make a decision to put to death my mission and to take your desire as my mission so what did he do sub sub now when he did submission he did it only because of love the motivation was not some benefit the motivation was only love the early church what was their motivation to submit to god was it love and when out of love were their children killed were they told to change their faith did they change their faith why not because their submission was not what i can get from god their submission was that i have found the greatest treasure jesus christ and my love for him is so much that now my love for others is pouring out that i want to go and share it with everybody this love today i found one video a lady who is only 86 years old okay an american going to karachi and preaching on the open grounds to the muslims and uh, in karachi uh, there were in lakhs of people coming and receiving jesus as their lord god and savior i i i just saw that video and i was saying wow and and what did she say she said god put in my heart to pray for all these countries and she began to say i began to ask god god what can i do for these countries but god put in me tremendous love and day and night i began to pray and pray and pray and one day the lord just opened the door and said go now and preach my gospel and she began to preach and the crowd began to witness the glory of god the signs and wonders and in 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 millions people's lives have been touched and now she is called as the mother of pakistan 86 year old tomorrow i'll broadcast for you hallelujah it's already come praise god then what did you do after coming <laughs> fantastic i saw it and i'm so thrilled with it and i'm saying god i'm going to do exactly what she did now what did you do looking at the video oh it's nice praise god hallelujah but what about me now people who live for themselves live the most miserable life try that you might be having everything but still your life is empty and the day comes when you're close to death you will begin to see the score and say what did i achieve in my life and when they put that cross written if possible praise god and rest in peace but you have not left any legacy that continues after your death what was your contribution in the kingdom of god you will find that after all these years at the end you look at the score you find oh my god now i realize i only worked for the world but never worked for the kingdom is it right if tonight god has to call you and ask you all that you worked all your life which kingdom did you work for nobody wants to talk forget it i leave the question with you hallelujah so write down submission means submission means we serve god faithfully submission means we serve god faithfully regardless 
regardless of the prison regardless of the prison we might find ourselves we might find ourselves in at the moment in at the moment the prison is a place of obedience the prison is a place of obedience joseph remained faithful for him it was for him it was just another place of service for him it was just another place of service he was a man of integrity he was a man of integrity who was going to remain faithful who was going to remain faithful to the lord faithful to the lord despite his circumstances despite his circumstances we don't see joseph in the cell crying bitter about how unfair everything is about how unfair everything is we find him we find him continually being faithful to god continually being faithful to god even when even when nothing is going his way nothing is going his way joseph bloomed even in the prison joseph bloomed even in the prison and this is god's will for all of us and this is god's will for all of us to bloom to bloom where we are planted regardless of the circumstances uh, regardless of the circumstances or problems in our life god's will is we be faithful god's will is that we remain faithful to him to him and serve him diligently and serve him diligently sometimes people say pointing to their family people say pointing to their family it is too hard to do it alone it is too hard to do it all alone 
and therefore i can't serve god and so i better quit or else they have this problem that trial and circumstances that is hindering that is hindering them from serving the lord from serving the lord the real truth is the real truth is each of us each of us serves god each of us serves god to the degree to the degree we choose to to the degree we choose to is it right hello people who give excuse my family there's so much of situation my 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 workplace there's so much there's so much so much so much and people who have got that kind of an attitude till the end they never serve god they only want to serve themselves hallelujah hallelujah today today brother vijay took me to a place and we spent time with this person praying and then i said to brother vijay i said you know why my wife allows me to go everywhere even if i go for three months trip she has got no issues even if i have to go for six months trip she has no issues do you know why because one day after i got healed and after the lord began to bless we were both talking one day and i said supposing that lady who came to a house and told you i know a place where your husband can be changed at that time i had demonic problems at that time i was i had lost my memory and if this lady came to our house picked me up along with you and the children locked her children in a house actually locked them because they were small and spent the whole day with us and introduced us to the place where this word of god was preached and in a matter of 5 days my memory was restored 9 days i went there and then i began to go to that place to receive the word after 2 months father got transferred so i said what if this woman had not come i was in the prison okay now she came and spent the whole day did she charge any money no for a service did the priest who helped me to come out charge any money no there was nothing selfish praise god and i got changed and as god began to use me i asked her one day don't you think people like me are lost all over the world and now don't you think it's my turn to go to people's home and set them free if i had not gone into the prison and she had not experienced the pain and the torture what she went through because she did not know the truth i did not know the truth and as long as the truth was not there the devil beat us up and destroyed our family but the moment the truth was revealed and applying the truth we came out now don't you think it's my turn to go and i said to brother you know for me my, on 14th of feb is the valentines day that's my wife's birthday okay and uh, in the month of december i was in uh, of one person's house and a lady came and she began to share a testimony and my daughter was there the other daughter was in india with the wife uh, this daughter was there and uh, the, my wife was there because her exams were not yet finished so she would be coming after two days and that day this lady began to share a testimony and she said two years back on the 13th of feb i had planned to commit suicide a friend of mine said 
anyway you are already planned there's a person who is coming from india why don't you go in the evening listen to what he says and then you can carry out in one day delay nothing harm is going to come so she took her advice and that day evening she came and at that time i was preaching in that uh, karama in the in the in the shed okay uh, and she heard the word and she felt like god speaking to her and she changed the decision she came for the next two days and the next month and she kept coming and she said you know what my problems are all solved and i thank god i did not commit suicide my daughter would have been without her mother please god okay now when she was sharing this testimony what struck me was the 13th of feb and i kept crying and crying and my daughter was wondering why is dad crying so much and uh, this lady is sharing a testimony and she can see me crying like a baby and then i turned to my baby and i said how many times do you find your dad is not there for your birthday your dad is not there for mom's birthday your dad is not there for functions your dad is not there for anniversary your dad is not there what if i would have thought mom's birthday is there so let me finish 14th of feb and then come on the 15th of feb you know what this lady would have been dead you know how we celebrate birthday the day i reach there we fast forward the date or we reverse the date it's all in your mind it's in your mind and then she she began to say yes dad now i understand so in my house nobody has issues because they know their dad is like a soldier going into a mission and soldiers don't come home till they have finished their mission yeah i love my job and if only people would get the taste of what i'm getting i tell you that's why jesus said taste and see that the lord is the david sorry david said taste and see that the lord is good once you taste him it's an addiction praise god hallelujah so it's it's a degree of each one a choice to serve god i cannot blame somebody else for not serving god hallelujah right down can i continue this is a is it a good topic hello is it a good topic is, is the topic irritating you hello is the topic giving you pain then the topic has gone waste when there is a pain you want that pain to go away and you will do some change when the word of god is preached it should irritate you so much that even after you go home you become restless and then you say god i want this restless to go and what will you do change but if it doesn't affect you in any way and you feel i felt so good there's going to be no change when do you go to the doctor when there's some pain and do you do the same or do you do do some change and the doctor says you need an operation others you'll die what will you say not only the operation take my dirhams also but give me my life come on so when god is saying there is so much of wrong things that need to be operated what are you saying let it be lord take my neighbor ha huh? thank you jesus you know uh, when when you listen to a teaching and you go back home that teaching should affect you so much that even before you go to sleep you are talking to god and say god i heard the truth and i find myself i'm nowhere close to the truth please help me help me to apply it do something lord so that my life becomes a blessing to others otherwise life has come and life has gone and nothing has happened and a day will come when we will stand before the lord and he's going to show you the potential he had put 
and the plan and purpose that he had put and you will be looking at that and saying God was this what you planned for me he said yeah then why didn't you do it because you did not re you refused to die okay we can either choose to be faithful we can either choose to be faithful in spite of what we are going through we can either choose to be faithful in spite of what we are going through or we can allow the trials of life or we can allow the trials of life derail just put it in capital letters please derail our walk with the lord derail our walk with the lord can you ask your neighbor are you on the track or already derailed why are you asking with so much of fear man ha huh? the way uh, uh, three times do it like ask her no one she is so humble why are you so uh, your body language is coming on the camera man giving wrong signals like uh, so you why did you do that body language then she could have waited no see how quickly he said i understand my mistake next time i won't do humble man no argument except my mistake next time i won't do now i was only irritating him but what did he do okay nice <laughs> hallelujah thank you jesus so right down we can either honor god by a life of obedience we can honor god either by the we can either honor god by a life of obedience in spite of difficulty in spite of difficulty or we can dishonor god or we can dishonor god by allowing our trials by allowing our trials allowing our trials to hinder our service to hinder our service so we can be in submission so we can be in submission to his will to his will for our lives or we can be rebellion or we can be rebellion to his will hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. so let's see how can a person be able to obey if if god is saying we got to be submissive and we got to be in obedience we got to have a practical way of learning how to how to obey praise god let us go to romans chapter 8 so so is jesus saying that he is the true vine are we his branches so what's the purpose of a branch thank god one person knows why go all koi nahi hai to get the roots ha huh? to get the root or the fruit so what's the purpose of a branch to bear fruit so what's the purpose of your life as a christian what but what have we done the purpose of our life okay 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 let me put uh, in a different way jesus is the vine we are the branch and when we are grafted in him we produce fruit 
right right now how does a person actually produce fruit practically uh -huh. Do you know the Hail Mary? <laughs> I'm asking you seriously. Don't prompt him, okay? Let's see. Say it loudly. Slowly, slowly, slowly. I don't want any word to be skipped. Okay. Okay. Uh, blessed are you? All women, okay. Ah, uh -uh, blessed is the? Blessed is the? Fruit, okay, fruit of Mother Mary's womb. And who is that fruit? Jesus. So if Jesus is the fruit of Mother Mary's womb, you are the fruit of whose womb? Jesus. Jesus has got womb or what? You are the fruit of your mother's womb. I, 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 are you understanding? No, no, you are the fruit of whose womb? My mother's womb. Correct? If you are the fruit of your mother's womb, how did you come into this world? God, I have to teach them science. The mother's egg. Now, who gave the power to the mother to produce the egg? God. Is it a gift from God or did she work hard to get it? Gift of God. Who gave the seed to the father to fertilize the egg? God. Is it a free gift? Now, the father, the mother came together and they both decided to lose L O O S E. Double O. From the abundance that God has given, the mother decided to give one egg. The father decided to give the seed that God had given him, the sperm. When they both came together, did the mother see it? No. Did the father see it? No. Did God put that power in it? Yes. Now, after nine months came what? The fruit. Now what went in was not even seen. But what came out, the grandma said, look at the nose, look like the grandpa. And the eyes looks like mine. But when the seed went in, were the eyes seen? Was anything seen? So if this fruit came through they both making a decision to lose what God had given them. What if Eve would have said to Adam, listen darling, I love you. But I don't want to have any children. So I refuse to give my egg. Where would we be? What if your mama had to say, hey, listen darling, if I get pregnant, my shape. So I have decided to get married to you, but don't you ask me, for that egg. Would you come into this world? So when they gave away what God had given them freely. Not demanding back. It produced fruit. In the same way. God has given us so many resources. Which is a gift from God. So every day in my life. How do I use those resources in giving or receiving? Malane do? Kya jane do? Those whose attitude is receiving, they never produce the fruit. What about Jesus? Was he on the giving side or the receiving side? What about the Peter and James and Paul and the disciples? Were they uh, receiving side, giving side? 
So all our life, what are we? So we are saying, God, I want to produce the fruit of the Spirit. And he's saying, okay, what are you willing to give? What are you willing to give cheerfully and that too with pleasure? Now, before the fruit came, did the mama go through nine months? And before the baby could come into this world, was there a signal? What was the signal? Extreme labor pain. Come on. Now what did that labor pain say? It's time for you to be extremely, extremely um, vigilant, extremely sensitive, because if you make that mistake now, your fruit might die. So that labor pain is actually an excitement because it's going to give birth to a baby from one world to the next world. So when I'm in the prison, everything in the prison is putting pressure on me that I must be stretching my neck for somebody to give something to me. But God is saying it's the other way around. If you are in that prison situation and you are stretching your neck to see whom can I give what God has given me and I'm losing it freely and I'm emptying all that God has given me now what's happening what I'm losing is actually bringing benefit not only in the kingdom but to the next generation like this fan did it just happen or somebody had to do plenty of experiments how to solve the problem when a person is feeling hot. Somebody had to use what was there. Because somebody uh, discovered the wire. The other one discovered something else. And now they took all the resources and came up with something else. Do you remember, how many of you have seen the James Bond movie? When our generation, and there, that uh, James Bond movie, I think it was The Spy Who Loved Me, in that he takes a pen, and in that pen is a camera, okay? And then he takes uh, the, the man with the golden gun, okay, with the lighter and all that. Now, when you look at all that movies, in those days, we came laughing. <laughs> pen with camera. <laughs> Our camera was here, jara roll laga ghuma yaar. Correct? And, and in that, you know, is, is taking one, like this phone, and on that phone is coming the picture of the other person, video. Amara phone, hey, khar, 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 hey, khar, 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 khar. Would we believe? No. But somebody loosed what God had given him, and there came the invention of that phone. But who gave the wisdom? God. When did that person use it? Because there was a problem. So when a person is in a problem, it is, there is also a solution that comes from the wisdom of God, which will not only solve your problem, but when it solves your problem, it becomes a solution for the whole generation. But when we look at a problem as an opportunity to lose, or do we look at an, a problem as a victim that this one is going to kill me? Whereas Joseph, in every prison that he went through in different life, every trial that he went through, he looked at it as an opportunity to be always obedient to God and serve God in whatever things God had given him. So my day from morning till night, what kind of a mindset do I have? The resources that God has given me, should I lose it to bring benefit in the kingdom or the resources that God has given me, I use it to build my own kingdom? Is it possible for a person to build his own kingdom? Tony, you also stop putting the scriptures. You, you, where it is? Romans 8, 5. Oh, verse was not said. Oh, okay. 8 5. Romans 8 5. 
for they that are after the flesh. What is the meaning of the word after the flesh? They that are thinking about their self. Thinking anything and everything contradicting to the word of God is flesh. So when a person is thinking the things of the flesh, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So, so, so before I produce the fruit of the spirit, where does it start first from? From the thoughts. So my thoughts are the roots which will decide the fruit. Hallelujah. So in my thinking, it's all the time or in my thinking, it's all the time, God, you have given me so many resources, you have given me time, you have given me a smile, you have given me a touch, you have given me uh, the talents, the, the gifts, uh, the resources, the knowledge to solve somebody's problem, you have given me so many things. And all these things are seeds. And if I can lose it in people's life and solve their problem, what happens? I am walking in the spirit. So throughout the day, my mind is full of flesh or full of spirit. Why did you take this during this time? Praise the Lord. Put the next scripture, brother. If anybody wants to know your future, you don't have to go to the astrologer. You don't have to go to the horoscope. You don't have to go to anybody and ask any message for me. <coughs> Pray over me. You don't need any of those things. One line and your future report has come. What's the report? To be carnally minded is death. And to be spiritually minded is so most of the time, are we carnally minded or spiritually minded? What is a spiritually minded person? A person whose mindset is the word of God. The mindset is, I want to serve God. The mindset is of a servanthood. Now, a quick question. You take any examples. Mother Teresa, was she having a mindset to serve or to be served? Take any person whom you know, whose mindset is to serve, and to serve. Now, there are two kinds of service. There are two kinds of service. Has anybody ever been to church? And the church is packed. Uh, and when the church is packed, and you came a little late, and there's a volunteer with a badge. <laughs> At least he's going and serving. What are you doing? Okay, Irana has got a badge. Okay? And that person is not in the word of God. So what is what will this match match uh, sorry badge do? This badge will say you got authority. According to Jesus, the one who has got an authority is the servant of all. According to the world, when you have authority, you make everybody servant. That's why Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Are you, are you understand? So when I have no understanding of the word and I got a badge, now my authority is what? I'm the boss. Eh? Go, go there. Go there. <laughs> Never seen? I tell people, if I want to destroy somebody, I have to give a person a position. That's enough. And if he's not in the word, he'll blow it up. So many people lose their mind because they got some authority. And Jesus said, you, who is the greatest in the kingdom of God? The one who is the servant of all. So what is Joseph doing there in the prison? 
taking an opportunity to serve everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So can a person walk in the spirit without understanding the word of God? Not possible. Not possible. Because when a person is understanding the word, the word, the word is the spirit and the life. So that spirit in the word brings life. His mind is set. Say that set. Say that set. Have you ever put an alarm and it makes noise and it tells you to get up and you to turn. Then it again starts ringing. Why? It is. It is. Now, now this AC, Tony got a remote. Tony, have you got a remote? Yes. So he decides how much to make cool and how much to make hot. I was in one place in Dubai and we had all the team members studying the word of God. And they were all sitting on the opposite side and I was sitting on this side. And the AC was blasting and it was coming on me. Imagine two hours sitting there, I nearly became a kulfi. Okay? And it's coming directly on me. So I said, let's take a break. And I went and put off the AC. Do you know what happened? Somebody came and put it on. So I said, now I got to do something. So I changed the, the, the number figure and increased it on the positive side by two or three. And then I kept the remote there. Now is the machine making noise? Now is anybody coming and checking? No, my problem got solved. So what did I do? I changed the setting. Change the setting. So just because you are carnally minded doesn't mean you will be carnally minded all the time. When you come to a class like this, the preacher through the word of God has got a remote. And that word is the power that goes and changes the setting of your mind. And once the mind setting is changed and you get keep that setting constant, now you are spiritually minded. So touch your person's forehead and tell, change the setting. Not change the mind. <laughs> change the thinking, not change the mind. Uh, so, change the setting. <laughs> At least you all both are doing. The others are saying, our minds are already set. And we are not going to change. Do you, know, do you know why there are divorce? Do you know why there are divorce? Why there are separation? Why there are conflicts? Only for one reason. Change of setting. The moment the setting is changed, everything in life is changed. Imagine for years and years you are struggling and you are still saying, God change my struggle. And God is saying, how can it change? Because you are not changing your setting. Imagine a person you're drinking coffee with salt for the last 10 years. And he's saying, God, it, I've been praying so much and 10 years have gone, the coffee has not become sweet. So he says, can you change the setting and stop putting salt and start putting sugar? Is the coffee going to be sweet? So just stop doing the worldly way and start taking the word of God and do it God's way. In your prison, you are spiritually minded and when you are spiritually minded, the result is life in abundance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See why the clapping came? Because life in abundance. Change the setting, no clapping. But which is the real, real power? Change the setting. The fruit will come. Because our mindset is, what will I receive? When, when, when you understand the word, it's all about what can I give. So write down. Is it good? Yes. It's good? Yes. How much are we going to apply it? Praise God. And, th and that's why, you know, when people look at you and you become spiritually minded person, where 
the word of God rules over your life, you look like a perfect idiot in this world. A perfect stupid person. And even people in the church will say he's gone. Okay? But what happens is, when you continue in that mindset, after some time they say, he flies like an eagle, man. Look at his life. Everywhere he goes, it's blessing and blessing and blessing. And I've been coming for church right from unge unge. But nothing's happening. You are coming from unge unge, got baptized, did everything, but the mind is set on the world. When that person is studying the word, you are studying gar gar ki kani. And what you see in gar gar ki kani, that only you are doing at home. Possible? Write down. We cannot, we can't walk in the spirit. We can't walk in the spirit without the word of God. Without the word of God. Because the word is spirit and life. 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 Wow, wow. I just got an example. Wow, I'm so happy, Jesus. John 6.33. Okay, John 6.33. Now, during the day, I'm near Lamsey, Lamsey Plaza. And there is one uh, Indian uh, shop where you get Vada Pav. Okay? Next to that, is a shop where you get all the muscles, tonics, and vitamins, and all. And each bottle is so big, big ones. So I was saying, what is that big, big bottle? That person is saying, when you are doing exercise, and you eat this, then this muscle go. If you eat that, uh, yeah. And the bottles are really, the bottles are also like that only. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, huh? What, what powder? Ah, wait, wait, wait. Correct, correct. Correct. You, you, you saw that? You used that? I don't think so. No, I don't. I know you did not use that. I, I, I know you, you did not use that. Because if you had to use that, it would have been like this. Oh, okay, okay. Now, 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 now. Now, I asked the person, what if the person is a little skinny? But even though he's a skinny person, when he uses and does exercise, he starts growing muscles. In the same way, the word of God is the vitamin of heaven. Okay? And when you start eating it over and over again, the word of God, renewing your mind, you get spiritual muscles. <laughs> what muscles was she showing you? Was she showing you her arms? Or I was talking about the muscles in them. Spiritual muscles, praise God. Hallelujah. Now, how many of us actually truly believe, 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 believe that this word of God is actually alive? It has got life. See, when we believe that, then you understand that this is a vitamin of heaven which helps me to battle against the carnal thinking. So you are going to take it more and more. Because we don't understand, we take it as a textbook. But a person who understands that this is a vitamin that can give me the strength that I become like a... Oh, what was that? Spinach is eating spinach. Popeye! You don't know, huh? Popeye, you don't know? <coughs> Tonight he will show you. And he will show you when he takes that spinach, he, he, his shirt and everything tears and he becomes like this. You saw that? Yeah. And then he hammers that fellow. So in the, he's eating spinach, let's eat the word of God. <laughs> then we can hammer. You, you saw the, uh, that day I showed that it is written. We, we saw that on Friday, right? Now, now what, is, what is that? Jesus using the word of God to 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 
silence the devil. So if Jesus had to use the word of God to silence the devil, how much do you and I have to use the word of God day and night? Hallelujah. Write down. Walking in the word of God, walking in the word of God is what makes you spiritual. Is what makes you spiritual. When you try to be spiritual, when you try to be spiritual, without the word, you are spooky. Spooky. Okay, now, now listen, listen, listen. Praise God. Have you ever seen, I've seen it with my eyes, okay? I've been preaching and a person comes from the door on his knees, starts walking on his knees, the word of God is going, and there's a picture, and then he's praying, and now when he's trying to get up, or lady or man, finding difficult to get up. Now did God tell you to do all that? Now why is he doing it? Is he a spiritual? Can I get it? <coughs> I'm asking you. Is he, is, he, is he spiritual? That is his belief. Okay. Now did God tell you to do that? So in the eyes of God, is he qualified? Good day, my man. He is a data ni. He is a man. You heard it? be spiritual brother <laughs> hallelujah so so my question to you is is that spiritual did Jesus say you got to do all that so most of our actions, thinking, is not what the word of God says. And the person thinks that what he is doing is spiritual. When a person's mindset lines up with the word of God, then he's spiritual. Now, she gave a good example. She said, he believes. Now, even if he's believing, and now, did Adam believe? Did Eve believe? Yes, they believed. But was that knowledge from the word of God? Was that knowledge from some other source? So if that person has believed, but the source is not right, is he spiritual or carnal? So it's very important that you go to the source where you get the right knowledge. And what's that? The word of God. So once you have the right knowledge from the word of God, and you set your mind on that, you are spiritually minded and if you are spiritually minded and your trials are extremely bad like a storm coming against you but because you are faithful of being spiritually minded the Lord says now that you are humble I will fight for you. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says God exalts the humble. How many times do we try to exalt ourselves? How many, how many times do we try to exalt ourselves? Are we supposed to exalt ourselves or are we, are we supposed to humble ourselves? So who is supposed to exalt us? God. So the more and more I am spiritually minded, am I humble? Yes. Now do I have to pray for signs and wonders? Listen. The more and more I am humble and I am walking in humility, the signs and wonders will follow me 
all the days of my life. Praise God. Hallelujah. So write down, walking. Okay, walking in the spirit is a way of thinking that lines up with God with God and his word while the flesh is a way of thinking while the flesh is a way of thinking that lines up that lines up with the devil and the world's way of thinking and the world's way of thinking the flesh always opposes the word of God the flesh always opposes the word of God last line we have a choice we have a choice of walking in the word we have a choice of walking in the word which produces profit which produces profit blessings and life or walking in the flesh or walking in the flesh which leads to no profit which leads to no profit curse and death and death praise the Lord I'll close with a testimony there's this girl by the name Florida from Bangalore okay you can see on the website on the YouTube if you type Florida's testimony this girl was called in a village as Murgi means a chicken means all her life she was a failure and a person of great fear and in her life she would find it very difficult to pass somehow she managed to pass and she came to Bangalore and she was given a CD she never met me six months she was listening to the CD and as she kept on listening to the CD and writing down all that was being said word to word she found herself coming out of fear she had attempted twice uh, suicide and after six months she happened to come for one of the service where she recognized my voice because on the CD so in the seed there's no name so she began to realize that this is the person and then she got connected and she began to come and study the word of God day and night writing notes. So she got a job where a, a weight is 42 kgs. So you can imagine lightweight featherweight Bruce Lee. Praise God. And she's in the sales. And last year we know that currency was cancelled and she was given a target to do 600 crores sale of properties in Bangalore. Now when this figure was given, those who are in the manager position, they said this figure, even if we get one fifth of it during this slack period would be extremely high. Whereas she turned around and she said, we can do this business okay and she began to apply the scriptures speaking life and all that by the time the year was over she had finished with 600 crores sales in the company she got a position in a matter of seven eight or nine months as she was doing the sales what others were in the company for the last 17 18 years she got a promotion on that level this time she hit again the highest and now she's been taken as the person 
who trains others. So she's saying, I was a coward because the information that I had about myself was extremely negative. But as I began to study the word of God and I got into addiction of the word of God, I found the truth. And as I began to apply the truth, I found that every time I would go and go for a deal and the deal would strike and I would come back and it was pure the favor of God. I want to, I, and then I asked her, what is your property uh, minimum cost? The minimum cost is about 2.5 to 3 crores and the maximum of a house is 20 crores. So if the clients are coming of that caliber and this girl of 42 kgs going to meet and represent the company, what will be the client's first uh, site? Correct? But she says, it's God's favor. And I begin to understand. Now, after all these years of learning, what is she doing now? In the company, she preaches the word of God. Coming from the office, she go finds somewhere where she is going and preaching all the days, up to 9 o'clock, comes home, cooks food, sits with the word, back to the company, and she's saying, brother, what I'm studying, I'm and she calls me Papa, what I'm studying, I'm able to apply in the company, coming back in the evening, I've got somebody to teach the word, and back again, and life has become amazing. I want you to listen to the testimony on the jclm.info type Florida's testimony. Amazing. There's another girl, her name is Aruna, pilot, had, having no resources. Again, a Hindu. She is a Hindu. How she took the promises of God with no money in the pocket, goes and becomes a pilot, and her desire is fulfilled through the word of God. And what was the reason that she wants to become a pilot? As she goes to places after places, she can share the word of God. Today, she's doing the same. So what are we going to do? Just come to the class, listen to the word, and feel happy that my life has changed. The mark of really your life has changed is when you go and share the good news to others. Praise God. So do we need to have a healing service or do we need to change our mind? Good. So do you want me to pray over you or you change your mind? So when you are spiritually minded, will, the, will things change? So do you need to labor to study the word or download? Why don't you go to the company and tell the boss, just download and the work will be done and you give me the diram. Do we go there and labor? Sister, in your company, do your people labor? How come in the world we can labor and then we get the diram? But when it comes to God, we tell God, I don't want to labor. Somebody lay hands on me and I get the mawa. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, labor to set your mind on the word of God. I know another person, a couple, who gave me the resort by which the rehab for the alcoholics started. When I was having the retreat for them, this couple was there to feed the alcoholics and they saw the power of God. They took the book. After that, they never came for any of my service. Till today, they don't come for the service. And when I met them, I said, I've never seen you all coming for the service. They said, we don't need to come. Because what you gave us the book and what we have the CD, we have been practicing it. And from the time we have been practicing, we were childless. We had no children. Today we have got three. We had only one resort. Today we got five. We are beginning to realize that even if I don't come, but I study the word along with my family and apply it in my life, I see the result. We, we get all the teachings on the YouTube. We, we don't come. But what we get, we go and share with others. And life has become so beautiful. So just because I've come personally, does not qualify you that you get blessed. What qualifies you is how much is your mind changed from carnal thinking to spiritual thinking. Worry is spiritual or carnal? Doubt? 
good. Loving Father, we thank you for the example of Joseph. The place which was physically a prison was a challenging place where you were teaching Joseph to learn to obey. Lord, thank you that those who learn to obey and honor you with the word of God not only come out of the prison but they qualify to become leaders who can take quality decisions that affect the whole generation, the whole household. Lord, our spiritually mindedness not only brings us closer to you, but that change of our thinking and setting our mind on the word of God destroys the kingdom of darkness and wherever we go, people who are being lost find your divine light shining through the gospel. Tonight, this is my humble prayer to you, Lord, that the words that we write, the notes that we write, help us to go back home, revise those notes, apply those truths in our life by renewing our mind and see with our own eyes that these truths have life. These truths are full of your power of the Holy Spirit and these truths set people free. Father, these truths have the power to heal us of physical things, emotional, financial, relationship, every area. So here we are submitting to you and making this decision under this anointing of your grace. Lord, seal these seeds in a heart that through the seeds will come forth a harvest that will be a blessing to the nations. We thank you, we praise you for all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day. We go to the next prison. Praise God. Okay. God bless you. Thank you, brother. It was a nice, lovely evening with your preaching. There are some uh, books and uh, clothes kept outside, and it is given by one family who has left the country. So if anyone of you all want to take them, please go through the books and even the